we what's going on youtube it's Donnie P all day i'm bringing you a knife so this is the third and final of the um three knives i bought to represent um knives that were in the best knives of 2022 category right i brought you uh, a shrade that just wasn't very good i brought you a uh, mora just wasn't very good and the last one, the last one of the three knives I bought that are classed in the 2022 Knives of the Year is this Opinel Number no. 8 Special Edition Tour de France. This is the Locations one. They have different ones. Uh, not Locations, Landmarks, sorry. Uh, it says the Landmarks Edition tells the story of the Tour de France through the iconic landmarks and symbols that encapsulate uh, encapsulate tour the Arc du Triomphe, uh, 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 Triomphe. That's what it is. Uh, let's see the Arc du Triomphe, uh, Mont, Ven, Mont Ventoux, or Mont, Mont Ventoux, uh, paired with graphics symbolizing water, rain, and mist. A uh, yellow lanyard pays tribute to the primary color of the Tour de France, delivered in a craft paper sleeve. Da 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 da. With the tour de Cra with the tour de France um, sticker on there, saying that it is a collectible edition. So this one is one of those models you can get the. It's the same. The number eight is the same exact thing, except it doesn't come with this or this. This and this, however, the painting there makes this a collector's edition and something that a lot of people won't use. I'm not a lot of people. So, we're going to use it. Um, let's see. They, uh, the knife is a graphic collaboration with uh, Manivelle, uh, Matthew Litschitz. Look, that's his name, dude. Um, he's a passionate cyclist and art director of 200 Magazine, a French road biking magazine. So, that's what the, that's where this thing comes from. Now, let's just get into some of the basics. You have your wood handle. Uh, what kind of wood is it? Um, I'm pretty sure it says so. I'll just have to press pause and then look for everything because it, the, this website on Opinel. Now, these are France's by far the, the best knife in from France. From France. Um, they are phenomenal, as you can see right there. It just popped up. That's the exact one I have. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, I can go through and there's a, there's a full description and then it says made in Savoy France. Um, and then it has like all kinds of cool pictures and then it just keeps on going partnership in the making, riding the open L. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to look up the specs. Okay. So I'm looking and it says the handle it says our selection of wood. We select beach. Hornbean, walnut, and ashwood, among other varieties. Um, so I'm not 100% sure what wood this is because they use a few, but it's wood. All right, so as far as the steel, they actually use a great steel. That you do have a, um, They do have a stainless version. This one is carbon, um, and it is uh, XC90 carbon. The overall length is 7.59 inches. Blade length is 3.28 inches. And the thing only weighs 1.6 ounces. It is very light. Um, now they come in all kinds of different sizes. This is they call this the number eight because there's a bunch of numbers. I have the number 12. I did it. It's big, right? It's a great knife. This one is just really nice little bush crafty size. You say, but D-Bad, how does it stay closed? Geniusly, that's how. And I almost dropped it. <laughs> my sunglasses are on. Otherwise, you could see my eyes go, oh. Um, it's got a collar lock. You see that? That is unlocked. That means it can close no problem. By spinning this collar lock, you can see how it's like a, a wedge right there. Now, it's not going anywhere. You tighten it until the wedge is all the way up. And now you have a knife that is not going to close. The collar locks I found out so far using the number 12. And I used it for a lot. I mean, I love my number 12. I, it's one of those... I stick in my pocket all the time. Um, it's a pocket rider. Um, this thing is going to be even better in the pocket because it's a little bit of smaller, a little bit of a little bit of smaller, and it's just going to ride nicer. But 
I, I can sit here and talk about it all day, but what we need to do is just take it out and, and show you guys what it, what it's all about. Um, I think I'm on a bald spot already. Oh, no. Golly, i got to start again. Um, now, they come really sharp and so sharp that you are going to be shaving your arms for days. Um, when people ask me about, you know, oh, hey, should I... What Mora should I buy? Should I buy a Mora? I always tell them I would personally go with the Opinel over the Mora. This is a great bushcraft knife. This goes in your pocket, in your pack, anywhere. You can strap it to whatever you want because they come with the lanyard hole. And it's just a great freaking knife. The blade is nice and thin. And when you're talking about bushcraft, when you're talking about skinning, when you're talking about wood processing, things like that, this is most excellent. Does it uh strike a spark where's that mora hold on i put it downstairs i think i have a, a ferro rod sitting outside i know i have them everywhere all right so let's go out and play all right so a lot of people say yeah but with a mora you can get out and you can strike a ferro rod well you can with this one too um no problem it's got the 90 degree spine it will strike a ferro rod anytime every time but let's do some testing testing hold on Let's see how it performs at the stump. We're gonna try a push cut on the half inch nylon rope and um, it went straight through. If you remember, I just tested that Mora Companion Spark. If you don't believe me, you haven't seen it, go look. It would not do a push cut at all. The Mora could not push cut through that rope. It barely did anything to that rope as a matter of fact. It was pretty sad. Four layers of leather belt, absolutely no problem no problem i've got some i used to do this in my old um, i used to use this stuff with my old videos when i first started because i had a bunch of it it's um plastic vacuum cleaner hose right and we like to see if this thing will cut plastic vacuum cleaner hose no freaking problem now this is nowhere near a chopper it is really really lightweight and it's too short to chop, but I want to see what kind of, if the edge profile will, with just whatever kind of, I, I'm not going to be able to get a hard swing, but if I can just at least break some fibers here and let's see. Oh, it did. It got through some, it got through almost all of them. So let's see now if we can just use the rest and absolutely just cut through the metals and we can use the edge to cut the metal. Now let's see if we did any dinging or damaging on the edge. No, it's beautiful. The um, the profiling on these are is really nice. It's just really, really nice. Um, the way they do their blades, and the bigger blades are a little bit thicker. Um, if, if you want a thicker knife, just go bigger. Um, but they always work. They always work. Let's let's test the balance, and we're going to do some four foot drops. That means four feet from the tip to the stump, and we will see boop, how it goes. Now the rear is obviously thicker than the uh, than the front, so we test it that way. Now let's do a couple hardward downward throws. Hardward, hard downward throws. Ooh, see how the bite is, and see if that lock is going to collapse at all. Oh, I missed the stump, and it stuck right in the tire. So if you were wondering, hey, D-pad, can this thing go through a tire? Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so did it bend the tip? No, the tip is still in perfect condition. The blade itself is in perfect condition. Did it damage the lock or the wood around the lock? No, there is no chipping, no chafing, no anything. So here we go. Let's get some feathering in. Let's see. Look at how thin and long those curls are. Man, I'm knocking some off of there, but you can see they're easily controlled feathers. I am, they are beautiful feathers. And they're immediate. That is another problem I had with the Mora is because of the Mora goes from thick to a flat scandy, um, you, the, the knife dives into the wood and you can't get long thin pretty um pretty feathers especially if you're a beginner like if if you're if you're out here all the time and you're doing this um eventually you're going to learn the um 
the edge profile and, and the edge geometry and all that. But um, on this one, it just comes natural. It's just all the way fresh. Let's see here. Look at this. Look at this. It's just nice. Um, and this is why I recommend to people who are thinking about a Mora, I tell them all the time, don't get yourself a Mora, go get yourself an Opinel. Um, this knife is just awesome. I mean, they're just awesome. You can control your edge so much better. Take what you want, get what you want. It's just a better knife. It's just a better knife. It's, um, it's all day for this kind of stuff. So you got to make fires and, and all that. It's an easy, easy piece. Um, let's see. Now, as far as I like to do a lot of, um, when I'm making spear tips, I like to chop down on the wood to get a tip. This is really fat and it would not be adequate for like a spear or a spike or anything like that. Um, but I like to do this and what it does is it saves time on carving. This is so light. That's not going to be an option. So you would just have to carve it. The good news is, um, it's a great knife. It's a great knife and I'm able to get my tip just by doing it the old fashioned way and carving. You, when you, when you put it in your hand, you can just feel the quality. It really, I mean, it's so much different than a Mora and the way this is contoured, it's really comfortable. Um, just an all around great knife. But if you're making a spear or an arrow or a tent spike or a pit spike or something to hang your hat on, um, you need something to be able to make a tip all day long, all day long. It's just a really good knife. Is it an airborne killer? Woohoo! First try. All right. So, so yeah, it even it, it even can uh, excite you with a little tiny throw. Um, as far as like value, this thing. Uh, you find these like sub thirty dollars, right? For the number eight, and obviously the bigger they go, the more expensive they get. It all depends on what you want, but you can even go smaller. Um, but they're just really good, and they're properly valued, right? They they know exactly what should be spent on these. I can't see; uh, it's just a glare. So hopefully, you guys can see. But even, I mean, just taken down like little things it's just a good knife it's a good good knife um i have never had a problem with one of these uh they have just been great to me um great for me <laughs> great with me <laughs> just great and um and they're they're not an ugly knife it's not it's not an ugly knife it's an attractive knife one of the problems i have with the moros is especially in that handle just kind of ugly just kind of ugly all right so now what about like process and kindling um are you going to be able to to do that are you going to be able to get your you know you we know we can get your fire started but what about um getting that kindling can you beat on it and still trust it to be okay absolutely absolutely this knife it's not warping and this is a thin one this is a small one Remember, the 12 is big. I hammered the hell out of that 12, and it just kept on going. Um, but, man, I'll tell you, I swear by these open elves, man. They're just really good, rugged knives that don't look like they should be. They're small. They're thin. Yeah, it's wood. It's got a collar lock. You'd think that there's no way it's going to be as strong as it is but it really is it's a fantastic knife so these guys right here are they worth buying are they worth owning absolutely if you're looking for a um like a, a knife to bring with you camping like a little pack knife to to do things like processing your food your camp food or just anything like that um i can absolutely 100 percent highly recommend an open l these things are these things are just beautiful, man. You get dirt all over it, and it's a special edition. Um, just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous piece right there. It says number eight. 
um, and that's just the size but this thing is sweet man I do love me a good Opinel and this one's nice now remember these are the um, special editions so don't use them <laughs> but you can um, I think this one's probably like 28 bucks 30 bucks something like that and um, it's the special edition, but you can get just the plain one without it. And I think it's probably going to be like 25 bucks. So it, it will be cheaper a little bit not getting the special edition. Now, um, the collar lock, you can also lock it while it's closed. So it cannot be opened accidentally, even though you have to pull to open it. You'll see a lot of people buy these and then completely uh, redo the wood. They'll put notches here to make it easier to open and they do all kinds of stuff. I've seen people put thumb studs in there. You don't need to though. It's just a, it's just a good knife as it is. It's one of those where you just stick it in your pocket and you can leave the little lanyard out. Oh, you need your knife, you pull the lanyard. It's pretty simple. Um, there's not much to, to talk about. It's just pretty basic. It's a wooden stick with a, with a blade inside and a little spinny thing. So I'm not going to sit here and talk for, for hours. Um, but this thing, the, um, the open L's completely worth the money. Excellent, excellent knives. Great um, blade geometry. Excellent, excellent um, edge geometry. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, so that's it for this one. Hi, I'm Donnie B. All day. Until next knife.